So the War of the Realms is pretty chaotic right now. It's affecting the entire Marvel Universe. It's very difficult to really keep up with it all, considering how many characters are out there you're not going to care much about. Um, but all of the OGs are part of it, X-Men, Avengers, and so forth. Long story short, Malachite has either defeated or conquered all of the other realms, except of course Midgard which is now under attack. Now Thor is currently trapped in Jotunheim. You have Journey in a Mystery that deals with Miles Morales and others protecting Thor's new baby sibling. It's really insane. But out of this, we are really getting some new characters as well as some, uh, I guess, reappearances, if you will. In the War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas, we have a handful of original new characters, not tokenized characters, um, one of them is pretty goofy, I will admit, but one especially I could see really sticking around. For those that don't know, the Agents of Atlas is a team that's led by Jimmy Woo, who was a former agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. They do the run of the mill, crime fighting, and this particular side of the Agents of Atlas consists of really an entirely Asian team. Talk about lack of diversity. But like I said, that's perfectly fine. Diversity is a joke of a concept, so uh, let's get into it. This is War of the Realms, new Agents of Atlas, and we're gonna talk about the new characters that were introduced. All right, so here's the cover. Make no mistake, though some of the characters are original here, um, this team does consist of tokenized characters such as Silk, which is just Korean Spider-Man, and Amadeus Cho, who is just a Korean Hulk. But Jimmy Woo has been around for a long time, forever, as well as Shang-Chi. So here's um, one of the newer characters, Pearl Pangon, aka Wave. As she's moving about water, she clearly possesses the power of hydrokinesis. But we really don't know how she got any of these powers, how she's able to do it. Nonetheless, she's in the North Pacific where she ends up running into another hero by the name of Arrow. Now Arrow is basically a friggin' airbender who has the powers that are sort of wind related. So you have Filipino waterbender and a Chinese airbender. Arrow is new, but this isn't really the first time that we are being introduced to her. She popped up last year in China. Uh, they confront each other by basically saying they are both out of their jurisdictions, but they feel these disturbances down here, you can see in the both, I guess, the water and the air. This is when something seems to pop up out of the water and hurt both of them. Then we move on to Mumbai, where Jimmy Woo, right here, is training at his Pan-Asian school. As you can see, tokenized Spider-Man right there. Uh, Miss Marvel, we got Shang-Chi, uh, Braun, and they're fighting this massive robot. This timeline sort of threw me off, but this really takes place before um, the, well, no, it's before and during the War of the Realms issue number one, and I'll explain this in a bit, but just know that Miss Marvel and Tokenized Hulk do not get along really with each other. Now, uh, Jimmy Woo then reveals that, of course, he leads the Ages of Atlas and hopes that Silk Braun, Shang-Chi, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as Miss Marvel will join them at some point. He then gives them a test by asking them what kind of pair uh, it is that he's holding. This is where you can sort of see where they're all coming from, which determines their perspective, right? Shang-Chi thinks it's a Chinese pair. The uh, Koreans think it's a Korean pair. Miss Marvel thinks it's a Japanese pair because she's seen that sort of pair at a Japanese store. Jimmy then says, bro, it's just a pair. This is why y'all be fighting over stupid stuff. This is where things get a little heated again uh, between both Braun and Miss Marvel where they are upset basically at each other over some events that took place in I guess the current run, uh, the current champions run that is. And Miss Marvel is the leader and thinks that Braun is too much of a solo act. But this is when uh, the notifications start to pop up on their phones. And then Jake O informs them that New York is under attack. This is of course Malachi bringing the War of the Realms to Earth. Knowing that Korea needs help though, as his attack isn't just in New York City, Wu instructs the team to go to Korea as they now are 
uh, new agents of Atlas. Now, Cho thinks they, of course, should go to New York, but Miss Marvel says that she's going to join the rest of the champions. So this explains how she ended up with Cyclops and the others in the other uh, War of the Realms issue. Now, in Korea, we see that White Fox, who is a newer character, well, she was introduced, I guess, a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. But still, we don't know what the hell it is that she really can do. She's obviously modeled after a damn fox, and apparently she can uh, really jump really high, or she can fly as she just saved this kid um, as an army is uh, claiming this area, right? And uh, they will, they're saying basically this is going to be the new Muspelheim, and you see that these fire demons are sort of around. This is where we see two new original characters. Now these two new characters are also fighting uh, this army in Korea. We have Danny B or Bai, AKA Crescent, who is a Taekwondo prodigy who has this buddy by the name Ryo, who is a magic bear that follows him or her around. As you can see, when she punches, the big bear punches too. I know it's sort of goofy, but this other character is one that I think is a pretty solid character. And that's Luna Snow. She's a K-pop star, but she's also a superhero. It looks like her powers are sort of ice related and Braun seems to uh, have already known who she was. But as they are getting attacked, uh, Braun heads the ship into action because he thinks that they need their help, right? Now, Wu is like the team down there got it under control. They got a plan, they're good, but his worries get the team ship struck and Wu is knocked out cold over here. And now Braun, which he didn't want, he's basically the leader of the pack. Anyway, they are now, they are now on the ground and Braun is trying to introduce himself to White Fox, but she knows about the stories of him trying to take over America. So they all began to fight each other, not realizing that they are all, all on the same damn team. Tokenized Hulk then pulls out some sort of hose um, of some sort, which leaves Luna Star sort of frozen in ice. Again, I have no idea what her powers actually are, but with her being frozen, it looks like Queen Cinder's army has taken over the area back over in the North Pacific. That's where Arrow and Wave sort of um, pop up. And the demons say that they actually, the whole plan, the entire plan was to lure them both away from their little cities, their bases to conquer those cities. But randomly, someone attacks the demons and Tutu Pele, that's who it is. And I haven't heard from this character in a while. She's basically a Hawaiian goddess. Looks like there's gonna be some retcon here as well or some expansion. So I'm really interested to see what happens out of that. And really that, that does it for uh, this particular issue uh, of the War of the Realms Agents of Atlas and by the time I'm covering this, the second issue is already out. So disregard, if some of these characters have been expanded upon, please disregard that if they expand upon them in the second issue, which I may be covering on this channel as well. So that's gonna wrap it up for this issue. You can see we got some new characters in Wave, Luna Snow, Crescent. Uh, there are some others such as Arrow, who is fairly new as well. The thing that I like is that they're original for the most part. Yes, Marvel seems to be a bit oversaturated with heroes at times. Some of these guys might not stick around that long um, because they might not stick with the fans. I think Luna Snow has this interesting concept. She's a K-pop star, uh, but we'll see if she stands the test of time. Um, I think in today's climate, this will be a hit if this ever went to some sort of live action depiction. But only time will really tell. I always prefer this to these tokenized characters. In a world with 50 Spider-Man, we don't need Silk, nor do we need Braun. They are both lousy characters as far as I'm concerned. So in this world of tokenization, it's always good to see people trying to uh, really just give these new characters a try. If they fail, they fail, but you at least got to give it a try and try to be original at the very least. Well, yeah, um, that's gonna do it. Remember, if you wanna become a patron over at my Patreon, go head over to my Patreon and you get monthly or weekly vlog and podcast requests, depending on how much you donate in a month. That of which I'll cover whatever you want me to cover, including comics like this. But until next time, man, y'all be easy. <laughs>